How's it, everybody? My name is Andre Bailey, and I am a Christian by faith living in the Middle East. My mission is to disciple men to have a daily word and prayer time and to inspire you to return to the old school values of honor, respect, loyalty, chivalry, and love. This is your weekly vitamin. How's it everybody? Today I've got a new setup because uh, <laughs> I had a helmet malfunction last week or two days ago and my old helmet it's a HGC that I bought when I bought the motorbike <clears throat> it's 10 years old so it's probably time to replace it in any case so I have um, resized the uh, shoey that my wife used to wear. Uh, she doesn't really do a lot of riding with me anymore. And plus she has another... Uh, she has another um, helmet that she prefers. So I've changed all the insides of the shoey. I have to say it's a lot quieter than the HJC. I suppose that's the difference between a $500 or $600 helmet and a $200 helmet. This one is so light and a lot less noisy. Anyway, so I'm trying a, a, the upshot of it is that I don't have a helmet mount ready for this helmet yet. The helmet mount, <coughs> sorry. That bounced a bit of air out of my lungs there. <laughs> the helmet mount that I had um, for the HGC was a center mounted one under my chin. This helmet, the shape of the shoey, I cannot use it. So I've ordered some side mount stuff. I might even do a video of putting it together. But well, here we are. Friday morning, Bahrain. The roads are really quiet. Um, usually on Fridays, everybody heads off to, uh, well, the Muslims in the region head off to the to the to for Friday prayers, which is what they call their church service, I suppose. It is a um, two or three hour, maybe four hour affair that they go to where they do a lot of praying and they um, hey mom, we'll talk to them give them a sermon, read out of the Quran, stuff like that and uh, all the expatriates on the country will head off to the uh, to their church, well all the believers will head off to their different churches but with coronavirus, all of that has been shut down. So, no gatherings of over, I think 10 people, maybe five, I'm not sure. All the churches on the island have been told to cease and desist. All the, all the mosques have been told to stop gathering. So the roads are quiet. Now I know there's a lot of Christians out there, you know, there's a lot of people out there that's saying, oh, why, why close this down? Why stop gatherings? We should be believing that the Lord uh, will protect us from this stuff. But you know, I, I, I think they're misunderstanding what the Lord said in the Bible about this. God, God, God can protect us from anything. I mean, we can pick up snakes and they won't bite us if that is God's will. But God has also said, use your brains. Like I said in my, week, in my video last week, our faith is a reasoned faith. It's not a blind, un irrational faith. Can we do things in the power of the Spirit? Oh, for sure. 
if we had the faith, we could move mountains. But then you've got to ask yourself, and I often, when I read that passage, I ask myself, if I had faith to move a mountain, why would I want to move that mountain? Uh, God's put that mountain there. Why would I want to move it? And, and, and you know, we can all talk about spiritual mountains in our lives, and yes, that is true. But we've got to use our brains. You know, God gave us, He gave us minds to think with. We need to use them. We need to use our common sense. I'm a biker. I get out in the morning, I look up in the sky, and I say, oh, well, there's not too many clouds. I'm gonna I wear a normal, normal riding kit. Well, I look up and I think, oh, those are pretty deep, big clouds. Let me put on some rain gear. I'm also a Christian biker. So I don't look up at those clouds and say, hmm, I'm going to wear just my normal kit and I'm going to pray that rain away. I could do that. I could really do that. I, I firmly believe we can pray good weather over ourselves. And, but if I pray in the rain away, there's going to be some piece of land, there's going to be some orchard that needs rain at that moment. And yeah, I'm selfishly praying it away. Do you think God's going to allow that? Do you think God's going to honor my prayer to say, pray this way, this rain needs to go away? Or do you think God's going to say, look, my plan is better than your plan? As a matter of fact, I read that this morning in Isaiah. My thoughts are so much higher than your thoughts. My ways are so much higher than yours. What God's telling us there is He understands and knows exactly how this world needs to be. So you would say, okay, well then why would we want to pray? Because God wants us to talk to Him. God wants us to ask Him for advice. God, asks us, God wants us to say to Him, Father, I don't know what to do today. Can you please tell me? And God wants us to honor Him and say, Father, I love you. Father, I am so thankful for what you have done for me. Father, can you please forgive me for what I have done wrong, knowing and unknowing. That's why we pray. We do not pray for our self, own selfish needs. And so why am I saying this? I see a lot of people on my Facebook feed saying that this coronavirus is a hoax. It's <laughs> I even saw a video where a man was quite honestly trying to tell me that the 5G network of the cellular, uh, the new 5G technology is causing the coronavirus. I mean, seriously, I've got to believe that. You have people believing that nonsense and not believing that there is a loving, gracious creator of the world? Come on, people. We've got to use our brains. We've got to use our common sense. Are there people in this world with uh, nefarious evil plans? Yes, for sure. The Bible tells us that. Are these people trying to use the current coronavirus to their own evil needs, designs? <coughs> yes, for sure. I believe that. The evil in a man's heart is bottomless. There are a lot of people out there that will do all kinds of things. This person that I was watching on the 5G, I am very sure that he was trying to scam money somehow. So, as a Christian, I look at that and I think, yeah, no, God gave me a brain to think for myself. I'll do some research, but 
that's not that's not what I mean the virus is not being caused by some radio waves running through your body come on and then there's all kinds of other things people are believing and spouting without just thinking about it what are we doing are we so panicked about death that we are trying to find all kinds of evil reasons for this you know what I think you know what I feel in my bones and in my spirit God has pushed pause on the world he said to you said to he's saying to us all what is important to you is your life so important you know what the Bible talks about idolatry and if I count my life more important than God my life is idolatry but that does not mean I go out and do crazy stupid things I'm riding a motorbike now it's a it's a dangerous thing to do I love doing it because it connects me to my environment so much more than a car does But do I do this stupidly? No. I'm riding a good pair of strong armored boots on. I've got a good pair of strong armored jeans on. I have a, uh, a ventilated Gore-Tex jacket on that has got elbow guards, shoulder pads, and a spine protector. I am wearing a full face helmet now there's a lot of people that ride that will argue about wearing helmets. I used to wear a little brain pan. Now I wear a full face because I want to talk to you guys. I can't do that in an open face brain pan. But I am wearing protective gear. I have got stuff on and I believe in the, in the maxim that says dress for the slide, not the ride. Because if I come off this thing I want to have a little bit of protection between me and the ground. And that's what we're doing with this coronavirus. Social distancing is not some evil plan. It is our protective gear against an invisible enemy. It is our protected. It is us just saying, I'm dressing for the slide and not the ride. nice motorbike but you get what I'm saying this is not some evil oh, you know what it could be that it is an evil design by the enemy but I do not believe that it is some kind of government hoax some kind of government thing to try and steal all our freedoms people can't steal our freedoms we'll give them up I am not hiding away in my house I am self-isolating myself to protect my wife, my mother, my family from the virus. I am protecting the old people and the people in my life that I dearly love that have pre-existing pre, pre -existing conditions. I've got a friend, man. I've known this guy for 30 odd years. He is as close to me as my blood is. He had a triple heart bypass a couple of years ago. He's at risk. Do I miss meeting with him? Of course I do. I bet I talk to him on the phone, I talk to him on Facebook, I talk to him on, the, on, the, on a video chat. I talk to my club brothers as often as I can on video. But I miss them. But I am quite happy to take a few hours out of my, or few months, weeks, months, out of my life to make sure that I am not carrying some invisible virus to them that's going to kill them. How do I live myself? How do I live with myself if I do that? Good How are you doing, buddy, Petty? <laughs> Petty's a... Another friend of mine on the island called Paddy Behan. Crazy Irishman. 
Anyway, where was I? Ah. I am self-isolating. I am keeping my social distance to protect the people I love. It is my choice that I'm making freely. And you know, the Bible also talks about us having to listen to the government because it is set there by God. So, the only time I will argue with the government, or the only time I will resist, is if I, if some of their, are, their commands are coming against what the Bible is telling him. That's why I'm so much against abortion. Just because it's legal does not mean it's moral. So those are the, 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 the that's the battle I will take up. Abortion. And same-sex marriage. I'm sorry to say this. Uh, th I, I'm <laughs> unfollow me if you don't like what I'm about to say, but same-sex marriage is wrong. I will resist that from the government. I will not let anybody force me to officiate in such things. And I will never be able to say, yes, I agree with it. Do, do, does that mean I hate gay people? No. It means I love them enough to want them to see the truth. Does that mean I'm going to go out and bash them all the time? No. I will openly accept them. I will, I will hug them. I will befriend them. But I'm... You know, I, I don't hate people. I, this is the thing. Once you become a Christian, once you start getting to know the Lord this this well, there's no room in your heart for love anymore, uh, for hate anymore. Sorry. <coughs> there's no more room in my heart for hate. I cannot hate. I cannot even hate my enemies. <coughs> but what I can hate. And what I can stand against as strongly as I, as I am able to is sin. I hate sin. I hate sin in myself and I hate sin in other people. But I digress. I was... What I do do when I meet people that are living in sin is I look to myself first. And I, and I think, and I try, and I analyze, and I speak to God. And I say, God, is the log in my own eye blinding me to what this person is doing? And if the answer is yes, I will cease and desist. I will not challenge them on what they're doing. Because in the end of the day, I don't want to get to heaven and be judged by the same measure that I've used. To recap, let's use our common sense, let's not lend our ears out to all kinds of uh, conspiracy theories, Let's trust the Lord that He has our best interests at heart. <laughs> let's have faith in Him, but let's use our common sense in all things. Vitamin out.